This is Tyler from All Track. Just want to do a walk around video of the fire track that we built for a New Waverly Fire Department in Texas. Uh, so just going to walk around the machine, kind of talk about some unique features of the machine and uh, and how it functions. So see the front of the machine, we have a four-way hydraulic blade on the front. Uh, so it's hydraulic up, down, left and right, as well as float. Uh, it's a heavy duty blade. It's designed for cutting a fire line or pushing stumps or logs out of the way or whatever else you might have to do, knocking over brush. It's pretty heavy duty. Uh, it also it has float, so you can actually just let it sit on the ground and, and not dig into the ground. You can actually just push stuff out of the way. Front of the machine on this one, so it has a worn 15,000 pound winch built into the bumper. Uh, when we have the blade, we also run a D-ring here, so you can, when the blade is up, you can run the cable through the D-ring as a guide. Uh, this machine has the Acron 3462 bumper turret installed. It also has a adjustable nozzle. The whole system is controlled with the CAN bus system, so it's really reliable. Um, you see there in the side, there's a diagnostic plug for the for the Acron system, so you can plug into it and uh, diagnose any issues you might have with it. So it has nice brush screens all the way around. So as far as lighting, we have side lighting. We got a big LED light bar across the front for long distance lighting. You see up there is also a full 360 degree camera system installed in this machine and guarded. The front brush guard actually just lifts off. It's it's held in place with rubber tabs. So as soon as you pull on it, you can, you can lift that that brush guard to clean the window or service the window. Same thing here at the side window. See, just lift it up, access the window, give it a push, locked in place. Machine also has the rubber road pads installed, so this allows the machine to cross highways and paved surfaces without uh, scratching them up. So it gives you the advantages of the steel track when you're working rugged terrain. The cab on this unit it tilts, so it's a hydraulic tilting cab, so the whole unit can just tilt forward to access the engine. I'll do that right now here so you can see. So these handles here, so basically if the handles are facing forward, it's for lifting the cab. When the handles are facing rearward, it's for lifting the deck. The same system is used for both. So you flip the lever over, you can push the button up here beside the pump, or you can push the button down here, either or. So I have the cab lifted up here now. Um, so you can see you got nice access to the engine with the cab up. Anything you can't reach from the front with the cab up, you can reach from the rear when you have the deck lifted. Everything's protected by thermal tape or thermal protectant where required. Um, as you can see here, this is, the, this is the line for the booster or for the uh, bumper turret. So because the cab tilts the whole uh, the whole booster line has to be able to swivel as well to allow that to happen. Walk around the other side. So this machine here, you got when it's equipped with a blade, you got to remember you got to drop the blade before you lift the cap. Um, if the engine isn't operable, you can drop the blade still just by using the float function on the joystick. Uh, inside the cab here, I'll show you this side of the engine. So you see, you got easy access to the dipstick as well as the filler as well as the engine oil filter, the PCV filter, as well as the air cleaner. Air cleaner can be removed right here. Looking upside into the tunnel here, the machine is equipped with a pressurized uh, MERV 16 pre-filter. So you can remove that cartridge right there um, and replace that when required if it gets plugged up with dust. Does a really good job of keeping dust out of the cab. This valve here, or this gauge here, shows charge pressure. Um, you can keep an eye on that when the engine's running, you usually want around 350 or 400. Uh, that generally is one of the first things we'll ask you if you have an issue with your machine, just to see where your charge pressure level is out. It usually indicates if there's any major issues with the system. Uh, this is the solenoid valve that controls your brake, two-speed, as well as uh, joystick control. 
This gauge here is your track tension. So the machine is equipped with an auto tensioning system. So once that pressure is set, you actually don't have to adjust the track uh, pressure at all. It, it does it automatically. It also lets the track vent the pressure when it's not being used, so you, you limit track stretch. If ever you need to service the tracks or move the tracks, you can actually just turn this knob here and that will bleed out the pressure in the track system, allow you to do any kind of maintenance you need to do. Uh, so this is the hydraulic tank here. Hydraulic tank has a manual gauge showing the uh, mechanical gauge showing the temperature inside the hydraulic tank. And this is the, the level. Um, if ever you, you know, lose hydraulic uh, fluid or run low, it will trigger an alarm inside the cab. Inside this compartment here, this is the DEF tank. So this is the DEF fill. So make sure you always use good quality DEF fluid. Um, that's really important. Uh, the cleanliness of the DEF fluid keeps the system running nice. Let's step up here. On top of here, so this is the, this is the cab lift uh, pump. So it has an electric system, which is what you saw we used in a system to lift the cab. You can also lift it manually using this uh, using this mechanical pump as well, in case you ever lose battery power and you need to lift the cab. These valves here are for the override. If you need to tow the vehicle um, and you don't have engine power, you can bypass the drive system and allow it to be towed easily. This is the handles to control the deck lift. So if you wanna lift the cab, you have to have these handles pointed to the front. If you wanna lift the deck, simply move those handles to the back. See inside here, we also have a handle for running the emergency brake release, which is right here. It also works for lifting the cab manually. Now we can lift the deck. Now we got the deck raised as well. You can see you can actually raise the cab and the deck at the same time. Um, so there's a safety prop for the deck. Don't be crawling underneath the deck till you get that safety prop in. So it just fits up into the side into a pocket. Um, so this machine also has a rear mounted 15,000 pound winch also with a wireless receiver. It's mounted inside the cab. Uh, I got a dual battery system, large fuel tank, tandem hydrostatic pumps here in the back engine you can see you get clear access to the primary fuel filter as well as fuel water separator there's bypass gauges on the hydraulics uh, inside you got full removable skid plates so you can take the skid plates out to access anything on the bottom of the machine uh, it also helps just to protect the machine in rough terrain Uh, this here, this box here is a, a fuse box for the engine emissions control system. So if you ever have an issue with that, um, you may have to look inside that box, just check fuses. Walk around the back. So you can see here while I have the deck tilted up, kind of show you this, uh, the skid. So it's equipped with a water axe striker three. Um, we also have a Scotty 4171 foam adductor. This is the electric valve for the Acron monitor in the front. They always have a manual priming pump. Uh, nice valves here on to determine whether you want to run draft from the tank or draft from an external source. So you just got to close one, open the other. Easy to turn with nice uh, nice flags in there to tell you what's what's going on. A foam filler, water filler. Up in front there, we got a hundred feet of three quarter on an electric rewind booster reel, as well as a 
drip torch mount. The rear of the unit has this brush guard to protect the pump and everything from brush. Also has some, some horns just to hang wraps of hose on. Uh, rear scene light, as well as a backup camera. With two other work lights mounted on there. This side here has a 150 feet of one inch line, booster line on a, uh, on also a Hane electric rerun reel. I'll let the, uh, let the deck down here and show you guys again some of the other features of the skid. So now that I have the deck and the cab down here again, I can go over some of the other features of the machine. So yeah, talking about this booster reel here, so 150 feet of one inch line uh, with a good, ho a good hose end on it. It's on a Hane electric rerun reel. This machine has a big, uh, big storage cabinet on the machine. It's sealed to keep water and dust out. Store whatever you need to inside there, open from either side. Also has locked handles so you can, you know, your stuff is secure inside it. The plastic tank is, is covered with 1 8 aluminum. Um, this dresses up the plastic tank, but also just allows us to mount some brackets uh, that you can mount whatever equipment you might need to on the side, like shovel handles or pike hand or pike holders or whatever you want to put there on the side. Underneath the deck, we have a storage tray that has your hard suction line. You got the foot valve in there as well as three about eight foot lengths of hard suction line. This machine has a flip up step. So when you're in rough terrain, you can lift that step. When you're in flatter terrain, you can just keep it down so you can easily access the top of the tank and the pump. And urethane drive sprockets, uh, they're long wear, provide smoother operation than what you get like with a steel and steel type sprocket. Um, solid rubber tires, along with oil bath seal hubs, and these are the metal, metal face seal type, like similar to see what you'd see on a dozer. Um, each hub has a sight glass in it so you can see the oil level and do quick uh, quick inspection and walk around on the machine. Up on the side there we have the cameras mounted for the side of the unit as well as uh, another scene light bar. Looking into the cab here, so any aluminum surface in the center, it's all, it's all covered with uh, sound absorbing mat. Uh, the floor surfaces and the kick surfaces on the side are all checker plate aluminum. This is the joystick for the blade. So it's electric over hydraulic. Um, gives you full control of the blade, up, down, left, right. And it also has a button on top that you can press to, uh, to initiate the float feature. Uh, in order to activate the blade, you need to hold down this trigger. Uh, it's a safety feature to keep it from falling on anybody. I'm up here in the cab. Storage cabinet here over top of the tunnel. In this case, we have the winch manual remotes, an inverter pre-wired into the system so you can charge laptops or phones or any other emergency equipment you might have. This here is where the uh, wireless controllers are for the winches. They're marked whether rear or front. Uh, we also mounted the VHF radio as well as a nice 10 and a half inch screen for the three, uh, 360 degree camera system. As you can see in there, you can see the front of the machine pointing down, um, the left side of the machine, right side of the machine, as well as the back. The machine's driven using these two hydraulic pilot joysticks. We find this control system gives you the best control. Um, you control the machine really well and it's also a very reliable system. There is no drive computer on these machines. So basically it goes right from the joysticks directly to the pump with no electronics in between. This is the handheld tethered remote for the Acron monitor. So you can pull the, it's a pretty long tether on it so you can pull it outside the machine and, and work the monitor from outside the machine or you can 
hold it with your left hand, still drive the vehicle with the, with the right hand, giving you the pump and roll features. Uh, switch panel giving you all the lights, as well as control of the fire pump for starting, as well as turning the fire monitor on and off. Here is the drive con or engine controller. So the engine control, you can cycle through the engine controller and give you all of the available information that the machine uh, will show you. Uh, this machine's equipped with climate control. So AC pump as well as, of course, heat. Uh, as you can see from inside the machine, you can easily see the monitor. You can turn that on here. So once the system is booted up, you get a red. You can control the monitor any way you want. So I hope that does a pretty good job of kind of explaining some of the features of the machine. Um, we're happy to work with any department uh, to kind of tailor a machine that works exactly right for what, uh, for what your application is and what your department's looking for. And we always strive to build the best machine possible and uh, we're, we're proud to serve various departments across the country in Canada and the US and internationally. Thanks a lot. Thanks for watching.